and welcome to Silent Cities, the Commonwealth War Graves Commission's YouTube series. I'm Claire Horton, Director General of CWGC, and I am delighted to be welcoming a very special guest. He is an author, an historian, a broadcaster, an educationalist, a big advocate of the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, and I'm delighted to say a very good friend of mine. I'd like to welcome Sir Anthony Selden. Goodness, Claire, th thank you so <laughs> much for having me here uh, and I'm really looking forward to this. I'm delighted you're doing this for us because, um, Anthony, I, I attended a, a very special book launch um, just at the end of last week and it was the launch of your brand new book, um, The Path of Peace. And it's an inspirational story of, I think, an epic thousand kilometre journey that you undertook last year a personal pilgrimage I think for you um, but the story behind it is so inspiring it's such a wonderful piece and I wondered if you might like to just tell us a little bit about what inspired you to write this book and actually what inspired you to undertake the journey that you did well it all goes back to the centenary and I was writing a book at the time about schools in the First World War and came across a letter uh, from uh, a young officer writing to his headmaster and he said uh, look if I survive this war I want to see created after the war a via sacra a, a path of peace uh, along which I want every man woman and child in Europe to walk as a reminder of where war leads from the silent witnesses, the dead, uh, are on both sides. And, you know, I mean, I just thought, wow, that was just one of those moments when I read it. And I thought, well, why has nobody done this? I mean, it's such an obvious thing to do uh, in no man's land. And the tragedy was that he was killed very soon after having this vision. So there was a sense then of picking up the beacon. It's all about him. It's all about his vision for peace and how we can find uh, peace between nations and between uh, different faiths uh, 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 and groups, but also peace within ourselves. Because otherwise, what was all the death mm -hmm. for? I mean, 17 million dead in the first war, 50 million dead uh, in all different ways from the Second World War. What was it for if we cannot in our own lives, learn to live at peace with each other and with ourselves. So, you know, that was it. Uh, and the moment I saw it, one of those big aha moments, I thought, yep, we've got to do this. Um, and made some progress, discovered the family, including an amazing man, BBC's oh, yes, country file, yes, Tom yes. Heap, uh, who uh, was, was just a great nephew of this man who died, Douglas Gillespie. Uh, and a team, uh, Rory Forsyth, uh, formed together. They formed a charity called the Western Front Way, uh, which is both walking and, importantly, cycling. And uh, it's it's beginning to happen. It's beginning to be marked out in Belgium, where, as you know, Claire, very well, there's a lot more national interest and mm -hmm. focus proportionately than there is uh, in France, although France does many wonderful commemorative things and many extraordinary museums uh, and it, it, it also uh, I mean walking it was a way of getting more publicity so last summer and Covid summer I walked it all starting at kilometre zero on the Swiss border where the, 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 the French and, and the German lines um, petered out um, all the way up to the North Sea a thousand uh, <laughs> kilometers um a million steps uh, i i count uh well i don't count my phone counts uh and it was through soil where where 10 million had either died or, or on all sides or had been so wounded in their mind or their body that they couldn't pick up their ordinary lives again so um that's why i walked and also you know i've always had a fascination with the commonwealth war graves um, and first visited uh, Tynecott, um nearly 40 years ago. Uh, since then, I have 
taken a ridiculous number uh, of trips. <laughs> All of your uh, young people. Uh, uh, of trips, <laughs> mostly for young people, sometimes for uh, others, for, for parents. Um, and every time I go, something new, many things new happen. It's always a renewing experience. And I do see the walk as a way of joining up, uh, providing a, a narrative line in between um, all the hundreds of uh, CWGC cemeteries, all of which have their own story, uh, as you know, all of which are deeply fascinating um, and all of which have so much to teach us today. And, and I think I think reading the book, it's it's fascinating the way that the uh, because actually you were the wayfinder, you were the pathfinder for this book, for this trail. You were actually testing it out. You were finding routes that weren't necessarily there before. You were trekking over um, terrain that that was difficult. You had some dramas. You met a couple of dogs that didn't like you very much. Mm. Found your way into hospital. Just just tell us a little bit about that that sort of experience of of actually undertaking that sort of that that exploratory route so claire i am not a walker i mean there'll be people uh, listening and looking at this who are walkers and if you're a walker you know what to do with your feet and what you need to do with your clothes and, and how to stop blisters i've never had a blister in my life uh, but now uh, they came in 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 vast numbers uh, and because once they start, that's difficult. Uh, dogs, I've always uh, loved dogs, uh, uh, as you do, Claire. So I was walking near Verdun, just um, close by, and I saw a farm that looked absolutely beautiful. It was as if it was on in North Yorkshire or in the Lake District. Uh, dry stone walls uh, and built of stone, lovely farmyard saw a dog coming towards me. I thought it was smiling. <sighs> We've always had smiley dogs in our family. <laughs> and uh, I realised uh, that its mouth was sort of had grey slime all over it. Uh, and it wasn't a kind of smile I particularly recognised. So at this point, I thought I had better continue my walk. But the dog uh, didn't think that was good enough and took a mighty bite. So you know it was it it so that it, was a trip to a and e yeah well it was kind of, but, but 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 i didn't want to do anything uh i just wanted to walk uh, and uh, a friend who's a nurse said you are insane if you don't get this looked at she said did it draw blood and i said yeah uh even though it bit me through very thick uh uh, uh trousers um and waterproof trousers and and so i did go to a and e um, having met a wonderful uh, uh, person in Brit but living in France um, who, who took me there and spoke better French than I do. Um, he, he met me through Twitter and just he, he was following me and the doctor looked at it and I had all kinds of, you know, concern and, and obviously they're concerned about rabies now ridiculous i mean nobody gets rabies now although when i got back and was writing the book Claire, i did see that fifty thousand people every year die from rabies, uh, rabies from, from domestic animals yes, uh, i'm glad i didn't read that and also i thought you know i mean they, they, you know the, he they you know you did send me a text to say that you'd been bitten and i'd said you know if we were new, if we knew dogs were involved in this i would have come with you i would have helped you uh, you, were, you would have, you would have been a dog whisperer uh, and would have told the dog to go back into the farmyard and then it would have been fine uh, but but you know I mean it was I, I then thought you know, the police then want, wanted me to prosecute and I said no I'm walking a path of peace I don't want to prosecute this <laughs> this farmer and I wasn't prepared to have all the injections because it would have destroyed my timetable anyway I mean look there were four visits you all survived from my own <laughs> incompetence um, and so you learn a lot I mean look walking 30 kilometers a day it took 35 walking days isn't that far at all but what is slightly difficult is when you do it day after day yes, after day yes without a break without any time for recovery and if you're on your own and you're trying to find the route and find out where to stay and 
work yes. out about water. But water is heavy, by the way. Uh, yes, and, and if you're walking, you know, you're wanting to have, you know, half a litre an hour if the sun's up. I mean, so, you know, taking four litres of water, I mean, I mean, that is that, you know, that, that that's quite tough. So you want to keep it down. And then sometimes water places weren't there and cafes were closed, restaurants closed, everything closed because of COVID. Anyway, I got through. Uh, I visited a lot of the cemeteries I'd never visited. And there's something about approaching on foot, uh, which is um, you can sense it, you can feel it, uh, it, it, you feel the silence and the stillness. Um, and every one of the cemeteries had its own very different personality. Um, and sense of um, being spoken to by it. Um, Did you have a favourite when you vi- because of course you I think you visited some of our largest sites, some um, of our biggest memorials, Menning Gate. I think you went yeah. to Tiep Fowl, but then you also went on the Swiss border where we have just one single grave. And each are different, aren't they? What, 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 um, what did you take away? What, what was your favourite? Well, I, I have to confess that, like. A number of people, I don't know what favourite means, uh, but the one where I just find it indescribably beautiful, partly because when I take trips, we hear the last post at the Menin Gate and then we walk along the ramparts, which is sensational to do with the moat and water on one side and the uh, town of Ypres on the other with the bells and the sounds and the smells of, of Ypres and you arrive at this rampart cemetery by Lille Gate uh, which lets down onto the water, the water. At, at, and there's such extraordinary stories but you know I, I mean I, I think my favourite ones on this walk Claire were the ones that I came across in fields uh, behind yes. walls uh, that maybe people don't visit very much, uh, but you know, and because of that, um, I, I, it, it just felt very deeply renewing, profound. Never, I mean, thoughtful, but without it being mournful uh, or tragic. Um, meaningful, without it being desperately sad. Uh, never frightening. Uh, yes. always emanating, glowing with peace. And so I think my favourites would be all those, as I talk about in the book, which I came across, which I never visited before because they, they are, you know, are uh, the, 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 the top 25 or top 10 that, that people uh, visit most. Uh, and it, that sense, Claire, of wanting the walk, which is Gillespie's walk and the Western Front Ways walk and cycle ride, the sense that that is going to be, uh, I hope, we hope, um, providing a new for the second century after uh, 1918, uh, a sense of of a fresh impetus and impulse for people to visit uh, the special places and to wonder and to remember and to connect. I mean, life for so many people goes by in such a rush. You know, you get by, you've got your mortgage, you've got kids to school if you've got kids, you've got, you know, things to do at the weekend. It, 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 we can skate through life. But, but what, what this does is it allows you just to get deep down. Walking, as you know, long walks, pilgrimages, it, it, it's deeply renewing. I would, I, I would, I would, I would agree entirely with all of that, and I think one of the lovely things about this, and I, I know that the that, that, that CWGC and the Western Front Way are working together in partnership, and we're working um, to help raise the profile of the walk because ultimately, what that does is it 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 brings people on their own journeys. It brings people to uh, to CWG sites, and you're right, every. Almost every quarter of a mile, every few hundred yards across France and Belgium, there are uh, there are war graves. There are beautifully kept cemeteries, and they just pop up out of nowhere. They sort of they they rise from the landscape, and there you are into this beautiful space. It's 
this space of peace and reflection. And you're right, it, there's nothing scary. There's nothing unwelcoming. It's a, it's it is that silent city. It is that sense of of arrival and reflection and remembrance. And and I I love the fact that the walk and the book picks out all of that and it and 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 i you know what's your thoughts because of course you're 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 such a um so familiar to so many young people and the students that you've you've uh you've uh, looked after and and brought through your own career and all of those young people that respect you so much now how, how do you think we 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 tackle the challenge of of bringing the memories, the remembrance, the the understanding of the impact of, of of particularly the world wars to to a younger audience now. How can we how can we help them engage better and understand? So I think that the cemeteries invite you in. Uh, they are inviting in a way that uh, graveyards in Britain. I mean, some beautiful ones near churches, but uh, overwhelmingly my own experience of graveyards in Britain is they can be sombre. Um, they're full of you know, tragic memories of, of loss and, and the most painful ex emotions that any human being can feel. Um, and they can also be a bit frightening, or to put it another way, I can be slightly frightened, uh, by them, whereas I've never felt uh, even a scintilla of fear or apprehension, anything other than that warm welcome from the CWGC graves. I think it's partly, as you say, Claire, the beauty, uh, the beauty of the headstones, the wall, the cross, the flowers, the grass, the way that they bleed and blend into uh, the countryside out of which they come. Now, my experience of young people is girls and boys, I think we're wrong to think it's just boys, is that they are fascinated mm -hmm. by war. Now, it may be different aspects of war, um, and but uh, there is so much there that both... Um, boys and girls can latch on to. History is a humanity. It's not uh, like science, which is intellectually enormously stimulating, uh, but history deepens our experience of what it means to be a, a member of the human race. Um, and war in its multifaceted blend of science and technology and politics and military strategy and medicine and culture and art uh, and human experience on every level, not just the elites at the top, but everyone's experience. It, it, it has so much for everybody. And um, it also invites us to reconnect with our own families. Now, in practice, uh, people often don't know and often are not interested in anybody beyond their grand and, uh, granddad and grandma, if indeed they're still alive. The great grandparents are, are people can switch off, and that's okay. But there are extraordinary stories, and that uh, meaning in life comes from, from from many things. But but from a sense that you're part of something bigger than just your immediate context, and you, and how to get through to the end of the day, and recognizing that your great grandparents and great uncles fought there, maybe going to see them and finding out more about where they fought, uh, is a very profound experience. It's a healing experience. It's a very satisfying experience. Uh, many young people love that element of research and one can blend in with uh, the National Archives and uh, Claire, I'm delighted you become mm -hmm. one of our trustees on the National Archives there to find out more in uh, where they lived and the censuses and other uh, materials. So uh, I think that that uh, we shouldn't begin with a, with a supposition about how do we get uh, young people interested, but uh, begin instead with why are young people interested? What is that interest? And how do we feed uh, uh, and nourish and nurture it? Uh, and the sense of inquiry and discovery that is something about being human that makes us want to unravel 
uh, mystery. We love mystery stories. Uh, we love films uh, which ha- 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 have mysteries in it, which then get resolved. And for young people to be um, discovering more about their own and other people's families, uh, and to be, to be, for goodness sake, you know, to be doing totally original work, uh, often that, that yes, nobody else has done, true. True. Uh, is um, uh, extraordinary. So I think that uh, there will be an appetite for years to come, uh, and that the it could well prove that the Wargraves have a, a a different, but an every bit as an intenser connection. And I uh, think with there, people. Are, there yeah. are different ways to do it as well, aren't there? I know we work a lot with young people, uh, with schools, colleges, community groups, and we, 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 we try and encourage people to find out about their own yeah. history through National Archives, through yeah. CWGC archives, helping people understand where uh, what their family background is, yeah. or not even, you know, if, if they have no, no family connection, mm-hmm. even their own community, their own street. And we work a lot on that. And I think... The walk and the and the Western Front Way feels a really excellent opportunity because it's not just about visiting necessarily cemeteries, is it? It's actually a whole it's a whole it's a holistic experience for people because you know it's a walk it's a long walk, it's a great personal pilgrimage, you can do chunks of it, mm. you can do long bits, you can cycle. And I think that's what collectively we're trying to we're trying to raise awareness to now. We want to encourage people, don't we, to to, 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 to explore this route on bicycles, on mm. on foot, with family, with friends, um, and, and go on their own personal journeys. Because it was very much a personal journey for you, wasn't it? it? It was very much for me, as I talk about in the book, finding out much more about my own family. But I did that because it, I was trying to point the way to say, look, hey, we can all find a lot out about our own family uh, by walking um, and talking and thinking and reflecting and taking time out from the sheer busyness of lives, which often I think we make busy to keep ourselves from um, experiencing uh, the, the, the depths. So absolutely, uh, and whether one's walking or cycling wouldn't be great if uh, people... I mean, it takes probably um, two weeks to cycle and probably five to six weeks to walk. Now, one could do spread that out of over six years uh, and uh, walk a week a, a year and uh, visit, make a, a point of visiting uh, war graves. And if there aren't, you know, looking up on you, your website and your resources, uh, and that's why it's important for CWGC and the Western Front Way to work together to, to, so that people can find out uh, these extraordinary stories. I mean, you know, there I was in... In, in Nancy, um, spelt Nancy, which is what I was used to call it till corrected, um, uh, in Nancy, and suddenly uh, there were graves, or, or Commonwealth War graves, uh, I think it was 11. Um, and, um, and, and what on earth were they doing there? Yes. And, and, and that sense that everywhere there, there are stories to be resolved um it is it makes it fascinating the mystery adds to rather than um it, it's not unsatisfying it it's satisfying because it, it it sometimes and we can't always answer them but questions to be answered so i think that uh there's something about uh, a withdrawal from one's normal uh way of living i mean sure going on the beach we all love it um and uh we all uh read books and then forget what they were when we get back and 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 we then all feel guilty when we got back that we've maybe drunk and eaten a bit too much that's all fine we all do it i certainly do but another kind of holiday is uh where you are blasting yourself a bit physically and withdrawing from some of the uh, 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 of the noise and comfort of life uh, and it is incredibly profoundly satisfying to be outside for six, eight hours a day doing physical exercise, to have picnics, um, uh, food, great hot tip. Many places uh, have breakfast, which I can never uh, get through, but lots of rolls. And you can then just stuff the rolls with cheese or ham or whatever. Um, and that makes a very nice lunch. I mean, it's bliss beyond imagination to 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 sit on the wall of a cwgc cemetery 
respectfully of course um, and, and take out something and, and feel this great uh, surge of positive chemicals and positive energy because you know you've been walking for uh, three hours and, and to feel that the deep stillness I mean it's you know th these are such fine sublime moments and the, and it's beautiful countryside and it's you know you it it, it, it traverses across such mm. wonderful uh, departement across mm. through france into belgium um yeah. it, the, the local people very welcoming and i think ultimately everyone everyone uh, um enjoying that space and enjoying either visiting one of the cemeteries or the memorials um, but just taking time out just just either themselves or their families or friends it, it's just a lovely way to pass the time and to to just just take some time out because because lives are so busy. Um, I was interested yeah, you mentioned yeah. Tom Heap. So, of course, Tom um, Tom is planning. Um, uh, he did a cycle yeah. ride last year. But we were talking about doing a dual cycle ride. So, for anyone interested, actually, I think Tom is very keen to lead a, a, a cycle ride a, along the Western Front Way. We're looking to, um, I think, you know, it would be, I, I'd, I'd like to do it for the foundation. And I'll raise some money for our charitable arm, the foundation. But I'd love to get on a bike and uh, I might have to have a, a battery on it. But. I probably won't do a thousand kilometres without practice, but you know I'd love to get on a bike and cycle along that route and and with you know or, or for something with people with like-minded people and and yeah. and you Anthony I think we talked about doing uh, not quite the thousand kilometres but another walk yeah. get get a, a group of people together and actually enjoy that walk socially and together and again to raise the profile of of the walk and uh, the route and CWG cemeteries because ultimately we want people to visit we want people to do this and we want people to, to enjoy and reflect and do something different in life so I think that's all exciting times ahead isn't it oh definitely and uh, meeting new people is part of it as is having deeper conversations with people one already knows I mean some of the best conversations I have with people have been when walking I noticed this when I was uh, 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 teaching and went on long walks with kids, sometimes for the night, um, on challenge uh, walks, sometimes uh, walking for crisis, uh, the, the, the charity from, uh, from Canterbury to London. You had fantastic conversations with people uh, it's a cliche because you're facing you in the same direction therefore you're not having to look at each other and you the withdrawal from the normal buzz of phones and noise allows you to 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 to, to get deeper so i think you know whether by cycling whether the, the bike is ha, ha, has a some power in it uh, whether you're walking jogging immaterial everyone finds their different ways of doing it everyone finds their own length of, of doing it but it is going to be we want it to be i mean we're told it's apparently the world's biggest commemorative project mm -hmm. um personally we think it's the best idea to have come out of the war by any soldier we want this to be come like a northern camino de santiago uh walk that people can walk uh, along um sometimes with a spiritual or a meaning purpose other times exercise or historical interest whatever it doesn't matter um but whatever they are on that they'll be walking past cemeteries and the more you walk up into the british sectors which is about um the, the top half or a third the more the french cemeteries and the german cemeteries you see less of them and the more you're into the cwgc um uh, cemeteries uh, and you can't miss them you can't miss them i mean they are just everywhere um and um yeah uh, uh, i mean what's not to love about that so we've done a lot over the last few years working to this point now but but what do you think the opportunities and what's the what's the destination we're heading towards i think cwgc western front way what does the next 5 10 20 years looks like for look like for us i think we've got quite a job ahead of us but uh, where do you think the challenges are well i i think that you um and the cwgc are doing some really exciting and original thought about how to renew uh, the mission uh, of 
CWGC when the known and remembered relatives are, are no longer uh, vividly there in families' minds. Um, and I think that you are absolutely identifying the importance, uh, the importance of family. I mean, every person, single person who uh, lies in the CWGC graves and whose names are uh, recorded on the many memorials, every single one had a mother and a father. Uh, most had siblings, many had children and grandchildren. They were part of the great continuities, uh, the blood uh, uh, flow of uh, the country, uh, of the world. And you are reminding us uh, of them and finding new ways in which they have things to teach us about families, about love, about uh, life about depth, about what really matters mm. in life. Um, so, so they are uh, educators, as you've identified. And if the Western Front way, the body that's been formed to uh, realize Douglas Gillespie's dream, um, can uh, work well uh, with the walking and cycling ambitions for the tracks that are being identified across Belgium and France uh, so that more people visit um, and that we can uh, share information digitally so that uh, both organizations uh, work together. I mean, we are walking in step, um, CWGC and, we are. Uh, and the infinitely smaller uh, and newer uh, Western Front Way are walking in step towards a common end a and it's the end that not just Douglas Gillespie the soldier who envisaged yeah. this but every single person whose name uh, and whose body uh, is recorded uh, would have wanted uh, uh, it, 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 it is true synergy and, and I think what's been what's been really interesting and actually really quite gratifying is that as the Western Front Way has worked um, with local authorities, with local uh, departments across these countries, there's been a real interest, hasn't there? There's been a real surge of, of I think everyone's very interested in how do, how do we promote our own local economies? How do we, uh, how do we bring people into the regions? How do we create the, these heritage trails, if you like? Um, and so it, it's been, it's been well received by many, there's still work to do with others, but ultimately I think there's a, there's, there's challenge there, but opportunity and, and a real interest in, in partnerships with with um, with local authorities and bodies in the countries um, that we're talking about, isn't there? Absolutely, um, because it's in their interest. It will bring new economic life and vitality. When you walk, you see all the Café de, de, de la Paix, uh, the, the hotels that, that were created in the 1920s for all the visitors back, uh, and those working on the... Uh, cemeteries and, and some of the museums still from the interwar years, it, it will bring back new vitality, the walk, uh, meaning, purpose, hope to areas which in northern France are quite blighted. It, yes, it's quite yes. uh, similar to uh, the industrial heartlands of uh, England and indeed Scotland. Uh, and indeed Wales, which have uh, suffered um, uh, because of the closing down of, uh, of manual industry. So uh, in every way, it, it, it is renewing life and hope uh, uh, and optimism. I look forward in 10 years' time doing the same walk again and seeing how each of those small villages and areas and those individual families and businesses have, have, have thrived and developed and grown as yeah. a consequence of all of the visitors we hope to see coming to the area. So it, it, I do hope this is um, this is the start of a real regeneration for all of those people. That's a lovely thought, Claire. So I think this, um, this vision of this young man, this 26-year-old mm. soldier, Alexandra Douglas Gillespie, 
killed in killed in action just a few days after he wrote that letter with this mm. vision in and and actually commemorated because of course he was never found his mm. his body was never found so he's commemorated on our uh, loss memorial um and uh, but that vision of his now coming to reality anthony and and you've realized that and and of course his descendants and and tom and his family must be delighted and i think I think, what what do you think now, a hundred years on, you think Alexander Gillespie would think of this? I think he'd be very pleased. What do you think? Great question. And of course, how can, how can we know? And, but it's happening and it's happening as he wanted it to be. Uh, it's wonderful that his family, Tom Heap, but Tom's mother, Peggy, who is the niece of uh, Gillespie, um, and other uh, cousins uh, and wider family, they're all so interested and have been fantastic uh, taking all this forward. Uh, never would have happened without them. Um, and Gillespie said he wanted it to be a Via Sacra, but not a Via Dolorosa. So he wanted it to be sacred and meaningful and enjoyable, but not sad, Dolorosa. He didn't, um, it isn't, it's there to find new energy, new purpose, new life, n n not to, to be swallowed up by grief, uh, as can happen. Uh, and has happened to many, so many of the families who lost their loved ones. Um, so it's essentially at its heart, life enhancing. And I think that Gillespie would have loved that. There can be a spur from Canterbury uh, to Freiburg Cathedral, two great centers of medieval uh, faith. Um, there can be longer spurs from London uh, all the way through to well, wherever, uh, at the other end, Berlin, ultimately. Um, I mean, it's extraordinary what can be achieved. I do think, Claire, in the 21st century, walking, including, and cycling, including long yes, distance, yes. will be a way it goes with everything. It goes with health. It goes with uh, loving the planet. Um, the, as you know, he wanted it to be a tree-shaded Via Sacra. He loved plants he loved nature he loved animals um, of course 100 years ago the soldiers were living closer to nature than we do now therefore getting uh, people back in touch with the natural rhythm of life and death is one of the great objectives I think he'd be very pleased about that as well Anthony it's been fabulous talking to you and I, I just you know I look at this and I think you know every every journey doesn't it? Every journey starts with a single step. And I have to say, um, the million steps you took on the uh, forging the path of peace and then the time you've taken to record that and write it and share with us not just the story of the, the journey, but the, your story, your personal story. And it, and it is a very deeply reflective book. And it, it's it's wonderful, in, it's poignant, it's, it's, it's happy, it's sad, it's, it's deeply reflective, and it is the most beautiful piece of work. And so I do recommend, very seriously, everyone, please, please do get a copy um, and, and, and actually follow your path. Get out your bikes, get on your feet, get your trainers and your blister packs. Um, but follow follow your lead, Anthony, and uh, I certainly will be. And so finally, once again, thank you to all of you for watching and everyone for joining us. Thank you, of course, to Anthony. It's been a real pleasure. And don't forget, uh, follow us on uh, our YouTube Silent Cities channel and all of our social media channels uh, and uh, keep on watching. Thanks very much. <laughs>